Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Hallelujah. That was a nice one. Put your hands together once again for them. So now we come to ask again what thou hast often given the vision of that loveliness which is the life of heaven. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we give you glory for this morning. We thank you so much for gathering us here once again before your presence. So, you will speak to our hearts. We surrender our lives before you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that every soul that is in this place or that would hear your word this morning, your spirit would minister individually to us, cause us, O God, even to receive the messages that are due us individually, that in the end, none of us will live here the same. Into your hands, we commit ourselves, our souls, body, and spirit any action of the devil to take our mind out of this place i forbid it in the name of jesus christ and i ask oh god that our mind shall be stayed on your word this morning that the eyes of our understanding shall be open that we shall be granted grace from heaven to perform the things that you'd have us to do this i ask in the name of the father this i ask in the name of the son this i ask in the name of the holy ghost father we give you glory we give you glory we give you glory. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus. 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 This morning, take your place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Away. Your name is Yahweh. Miracle working, Lord. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Oh, you're a miracle working God. Your name is Yah. If you have not sung and worshiped your God this morning, name open your mouth and say the words. Let the words come out of your spirit. Your name is Yah. You are a miracle working God. Your name is Yah. Your name, oh, your, your name, oh, name is Yah. Yah. Yahweh. Your name, oh, your name, Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. You are a miracle working God. Your name is Yahweh. Put your hands together for the Lord. This morning, by the grace of God, we're going to learn a few things from scriptures. And being the last day that this topic is going to be treated, most often it comes like a summary of everything that everybody has said. But I believe that you're going to see something new in the word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just get your mind focused in this place and on the word of God. Hallelujah. When I sat down, the first thought that came to my mind was that question over there. Where is your fruit? I'm sure the whole week, many people have come with this question, where is your fruit? And you've heard it. And it's as if it is a cliche and it's because nobody's going to examine you, call you in front and say and inspect. And so most often, we we'll look at this and, and always think that 
it is one of the many things it is one of the many things but this morning i want you to know it is not just one of the many things what i want to talk about is the fact that if we talk about church it is you it is not this building it is not the cross over there it is you the individual sitting down here there was this story that is told about um a preacher man who was talking to um his congregants and at a point i think some of them were chewing gum were eating in the room and one very zealous one just lifted up the hand and said pastor do you know that these young men in the church are littering and making the church so dirty and the preacher man looked into his face and said young man it is the churches that are littering the building many times we forget we are the church we are the church and this morning the church is it the church has so beautiful a heritage and i want to start on that note now let me ask the question is anyone here who has not believed on the name of the lord jesus christ if you are here just let me see your hand maybe somebody just invited you to come in i have a good news and i don't want you to miss out on this good news if you are here somebody just asked you to just come to church it's sunday just wanted to take the tally and so you just join the person but you are sure you are not born again in your mind in your heart you haven't done that can i see your hand before i start my sermon all right so i presume everyone that is here is born again now this is the good news of it for the first time to be revealed from divinity was a statement that christ jesus offered in the book of john chapter 11 verse 25 it was in two parts this good news to the church that was yet to be born was this in fact before then this news he had not revealed it to any prophet he was the first person to reveal the news and in john chapter 11 verse 25 he said i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live doesn't sound like a new thing to you yes it doesn't sound because throughout the ages they believed that there was some kind of a resurrection at least some sections of the people of god the, the pharisees they believed that there was a resurrection but the part of it which they never knew was this and those that believe and are living shall never die oh you didn't get that one the fact that it is possible when the church age starts that there shall be people who on believing on jesus christ will not die but would be translated from their life that they live right now straight into the presence of the father in a new body no prophet in the past knew about it and that was the first announcement so you are assured you may not see death don't be afraid don't be afraid let this fill your heart with joy and paul followed up on the same mystery in the book of corinthians first corinthians 15 51 he said of a troop we shall all not die we shall all not fall asleep but we shall be changed oh are the scriptures are you helping me with scriptures it is a mystery and this announcement must be taken and that's why i ask if there's anybody here listen when when we are being changed in a moment if you are not born again you aren't going to be changed you aren't going to be changed and if you know the benefit of being changed where this body that you have is going to be to be changed to another body a body that knows no waist pain a body that knows no headache a body that has no heart disease a body that has no diabetes a body that does not need visa to go to america i think i'm coming home now a, 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 a body a, you see that body can even chew fish when you close the door that body doesn't need you to open the door for him to come out 
Bible says that as Christ was when he resurrected, so shall we be. And I always choose this example and I'm sure you've heard me say it before. The angel opened the tomb, rolled away the huge tomb, not because he was expecting a weak Jesus to, to be unable to move the, the, the stone, so he was coming to help him. No. No. In fact, it was for, our, it was for us. Not for him. In fact, he was not there. By the time the angel arrived, the angel came to roll away the tomb, the, the stone, to give us and our weak mind a proof that he was not there. The body he had obtained on the dawn of Sunday. As for this, I shall not stop saying it. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Why? Because he said, if some of Bibi ye obida and otaka asem, there is something, some proverb like that. You see. You like the thing. So even if they haven't asked you the question, you want to say it and say it again and say it again. That is the kind of body we are going to have. And so we are all, we all must be filled with that joy as we walk out and come in every day. How does this joy and this privilege that we have because we are born again tie in with this scripture that we have been looking at the whole month and more vitally the question that was posed where is your fruit i said that bishop may not ask you where is your fruit uh, any of the none of the pastors will come and tally your fruits for you and so this whole month can pass by and you just come and go i say it is nothing but i here to announce to you in the hallway of your entrance into this joy that you are going to enjoy when the Savior calls out his own from earth and say come up hither and this body of yours is changed and you are enjoying all these nice things I have enlisted before you enter you shall meet the Lord and there shall be judgment for you for the works that you have done so the where is your fruit you are going to get the where is your fruit proper not from human beings but from your savior himself open your bible to the book of corinthians maybe you think i'm just uh, saying something i'm just saying something i'm just saying something i'm not saying something i am telling you the word of god hallelujah i'm not just saying something second corinthians chapter 5 Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. No Christian brother or sister will ask you where is your fruit. Nobody is going to inspect. And so, yes, you have believed. And so, yeah, you just doing whatever you want. When you do something that does not please the Holy Ghost, he chastises you. And um, you repent in some of us. Are still even stiffening our neck, etc. But this is a sure word concerning the scripture that we are talking about. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says that for we must all, it is not we may all, it is we must all. Yes, we have been changed. And don't get me right. If you are reading scriptures and you see things like judgment and things, don't be afraid. Listen. When scripture talks about judgment, the interpretation is different from, for, for everybody. Hallelujah. Now, the fact that you have believed on Jesus Christ already guarantees you, whilst you are here, the chance into the kingdom. So this judgment you are seeing here is not to say that when you get there, now they are going to decide whether you go to heaven or not. No, that is not this judgment. This is what we call the Bema judgment, which is judgment before our Lord. When we get in there, and I'm saying it's going to happen in the hallway. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, don't think that this is the one to decide whether you are going to heaven or, or hell. The decision to go to heaven or, or hell 
is taken whilst you are here. When your eyes get closed, you have only two places. You either appear in the presence of God or you appear in hell. Straight. So, don't, don't be mistaken at all. If I'll give you the chance again, in case by the end of this, you didn't know I was going to ask that question, but I'll give you the chance again, so you can be born again. Because that thing that we do when we walk up the aisle and come and stand in front, it is to receive the ticket to enter. So whilst you are even living, you have already, you are already seated in Christ, in, in God, in heavenly places. It is so important a process that I don't see why anybody should ever refuse this free offer. Whilst you are on earth, you are seated in heaven. You can't get it anyway. You can't get it anyway. So I'll repeat when I finish what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is that in the hallway, all those who get the initial benefit of all their heart attack and headache going away, when you get there, that question that is posted this month, the Lord who bought you with his own blood, he will ask you. Open to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from 12 to 15. Let me tell you something there. Now, we have come to believe on the Lord and are expected to build on our faith. Now, from verse 12, listen. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, Precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. So the reason why, after being born again, God did not just snatch you immediately into heaven, is now what you are, we are, we are, we've been examining. And how you ought to do it and do it very well. Every man's work shall be manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it was. Next verse. And if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall do what? He shall do what? You would go to heaven anyway. This suffering of loss does not mean you are, not, you are already there. In fact, you were there even whilst you were on earth. So that's not the point. You will surely be inside. And that is what the last one says. But he himself shall be saved. But then you are saved after suffering loss. And so the question, where is your fruit? Is going to be asked by your savior himself. Can you imagine somebody standing in front of somebody that he respects and knows so much? The person has done so well. And he knows that there's something he could have done and never did. And the person just shows up and he said, have you done it? Can you imagine the thing on your face? Not that you, did, you didn't have the ability to do it. Because you could have done it. But yet, you didn't do it. And, and the kind of face... I don't believe any one of us here will want to have that face when our master who has saved us and we are witnesses to what he has delivered us from with his own precious blood. When you were just going into that accident, he just put his hand into the car and yanked you off. When that man came with a gun to shoot you, he was there to deviate the bullets. He did all these things and you were a witness. And what he asked you to do you are sure in yourself you never did. We will not have that. So this morning, I'm going to explain what he requires of us. What is this fruit that he's talking about? Which we can do something about. And that is so that when we meet him in the hallway into heaven, and he's there to check, and he will do it. He said it will be done by fire. And everything that was done, not of his will, not, you see, you can come to church and, and sweep the whole compound and dust and paint everywhere. If the assignment given you is to sweep this hall and after doing everything in the whole community, this hall is not swept. You have not done your work. Pastors and leaders 
may try to encourage you to do that work by giving you various assignments just to see if you know to, to, to ginger you but as you do all this assignment we call it general ministry you'll be asked to do this asked to do this sometimes as you are doing that and you are faithful even in what god is asking you to do which is someone else ministry or that is being given you by your leader god suddenly drops in your spirit what particularly he wants you to do so as you keep doing all those things you are listening to yourself it could be the same as what your leader said maybe it could be something slightly different but once you catch that know that in the hallway that is the where is your foot that's going to be asked and it will be so clear that you will be convinced in yourself that what the spirit is saying is true and you too you agree it is true it is a personal agenda and assignment open your bible to the book of second peter second peter let me explain some of these things for you i went second peter chapter one bible says that when we become born again and we are brought into the family of christ either two we were not part of this commonwealth but by the grace of god we are brought in the things that god would have us to do both have to do with our own self-improvement and our assignment to influence all people around us and also to support them and you can hear in scriptures where paul said since i heard that of your faith in the lord i did not cease to pray for you daily he was not there but he was assisting them because they have believed on the lord and they have been saved he prayed for them daily these are some of the things that you can do for people out of yourself but there are also things that you can do for yourself and all these come together to form the kind of fruits that you begin to bear from the day you become born again and second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 tells us this and beside this giving diligence add to your faith you believed on the lord jesus christ in fact the underlying score for anybody to be born again and i always say this and explain that we do not cause people to be born again to be born again it is the father that must call you and this process is clearly stated, stated in the book of matthew chapter 6 when christ met the apostles and was questioning them about who they thought he was and he said now he was going to begin a new thing that's another topic i'm going to talk about some other day but the process of one getting born again starts with the father unveiling the eyes of the unbeliever to realize that oh what you are saying is true now when he says that it is true then now he believes it in his heart and like romans 10 verse 10 says now he walks up and opens the mouth and confesses then god pours into his spirit that new birth and becomes one of us none of us have an agenda in this it is the father now that you have become born again the next steps bible is saying in second peter chapter 1 verse 5 add to that faith virtue virtue is moral character so you cannot be in the house 10 years 20 years you are a believer yes everybody understands but you were just like when you entered the room you must add something to it and that is a virtue of moral um, 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 character and add to the moral character temperance what is temperance control self-control you add it to the virtue or moral character then you add knowledge some of us know so much in the daily graphic that we know even in the word of god you add knowledge knowledge of what of the moon stars or what or of of biology of accountants accountancy or what it is the knowledge of the lord look you cannot pass your science if you don't know the lord he 
is science. That's another, another topic. And you add to this um, um, knowledge, temperance, and to the temperance, you're going to add patience. So if you are the type who just jots out so many things, you tell yourself, now I am to add patience to it. To patience, you are to add godliness. To, go, to, to, to godliness, you are to add brotherly what? Kindness. And to, so you see that it is a process of adding and adding and adding and listen. These things are not done overnight. All the period that you live on earth are periods that these transformations are taking place. And none of us is going to finish this transformation till our bodies are changed. It is when he says, come up here. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this body is changed. Then we shall be as he is. So the process is going on throughout your life. And the point is to ensure that you do not shorten it. You do not become lazy about it. You go all the way from, from, from adding godliness. You're going to add brotherly kindness. You're going to add love or charity. And in all these things, Bible is saying that you are being built by yourself. Your fruits are coming out. And in, 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 in addition, as you improve yourself, you are holding the hand of the brother and sister and saying that you will not go to hell. Open to first uh, Peter chapter 3. Let's talk about that. First Peter chapter 3. Is it chapter 3? No, no. First Corinthians chapter 3 rather. 3.15. can start from somewhere. I'm not sure if I've quoted that one. First Peter chapter 3. Verse 15. Let's see what's there. Okay, so I think we've, we've done that. But the point I want to carry across is the fact that there are some whom you would have to snatch as if it were from the fire. And these are all things that we all are supposed to do throughout as we improve ourselves and we impact the people around us. We are bearing fruits and this fruit, it is far better than what we are chasing now. I'll come to that in a minute. Ask yourself, when you leave here from Sunday and come the next Sunday, how much of the time, 24 times 7, have been used to do any of the things I've mentioned? Encourage somebody. Speak to somebody. Add something to your own self. Moving forward. The church is now in a state where these things are not a part of us at all. And that leads me to the point and the reasons why it becomes very difficult for us to bear these fruits. I have three things as causes of our inability to bear the fruits. Mark chapter 4. Starting from verse 15. Now, Jesus Christ told of things that can happen for the word that is spoken to us not to yield fruit. The first one is a wayside course. As we sit down here, that is Mark chapter 4, verse 15. As we sit down here, various announcements have been read. Various people have. And when you come to church, don't segregate. Oh, me, I don't like worship. I like announcement. <laughs> I don't like praise and worship. I like word. Listen, from the beginning of the service to the time that they say the grace period, everything that is done is instructed of the Lord. I thank God you agree with me. 
But before we leave this place, we'll put a sheet out there. And everybody's going to write one announcement he remembers. You already got what I'm trying to say. By the time we live here, not only have we forgotten the word, every encomiums added to the word announcement, dosology, whatever, is like somebody just stood in front of the door and wiped it off. That is what we call the wayside cause of our unfruitfulness. The devil comes in and Bible tells us he immediately steals the word. This is as real as you can see your next church member sitting beside you. And this is happening. Even whilst we are talking right now, if I stop now and I take a quiz, it shall be a disaster. As I just speak right now. You know, don't, don't mind me too much because I behave a bit more like a teacher. Sometimes. If I do it right now, and I always say that, you see, the difference between the person who is first in class and the one who is last is just the fact that when the teacher was teaching, that person's mind was not in the class. It was in the kitchen. That's all. And if you have this repeated, that means that you're going to be repeatedly at the bottom. Because by the time they finish, you haven't heard anything. It's like the whole show. The whole show. It's just because at the time the teacher was talking, your mind was not there. That is all. And as we sit down here right now, the one who can remember everything from the beginning of the service to the end, the thing that will separate that person from the one who cannot remember anything is because that person who remembers, the mind was here. Bible is saying the devil comes to steal the word immediately. And he's still doing it. Now, this room, right now, he's doing it. And I speak to you for our spirits. I forbid you. Take your hands off the, the minds of, of God's people in the name of Jesus Christ. These are prayers you should be saying to yourself every now and then. Because you will need that thing that he's stealing away to improve on your life. To add knowledge to something. To add virtue to your faith to add godliness to your something hallelujah but how can you do that when you are even forgotten it in fact most of us we only remember that same topic after one year when the same preacher comes and he tries to repeat what he said the last year then you remember oh i said i'll go and, and do outreach ah he has come again when i finish and i leave this place i'll do it i'll do it i'll do it as soon as you get out it is lost and you never remember it again till the person comes another year and makes it, oh, I told myself I was going to do it last year. You don't know where the thing passes. By the time you realize you are back here, nothing have, you have not fulfilled even one. And this keeps going on in your life. Keeps going on in your life. But it is time you check this wayside course and tell yourself, now I shall bring pen. I shall bring a book. I shall write it down. I will go over it. I will go over the tape. I will ask myself, have I done it? Have I done it? Have I done it? You will mark it and you will clear it as done. <clears throat> the second cause of our unfruitfulness, I tell me to be the stony cause. The stony cause. These are things that were told us of Jesus himself. So, I am just in scripture. Mark chapter 4 verse 17. The stony cause is the one that received the word. Oh, he's happy about it. Quite powerful. Hey, very nice. The Bible says that when persecution and affliction arises by way of the word he has received, and 
you think that what the person is saying is correct. But you have received the word which is saying that that is what you must do. And you look at your life. It looks like what the person said is true. I'm hungry. I am hungry. Me now, I don't work. This 10 Ghana they have given me, I am supposed to put one Ghana inside. But, but when I ask the price of the food, the two was up. They said 12 cities. They think Christ more than that. And in the hungry state, I'm just using that as an example. But there are many things that will become offended. And now it seems to us that the preacher man and the word of God that we have heard, it's a means to dupe us. It's a means to make us a moon God doesn't love us. Why should he give us this command? If all the things in the world are for him, why does he want us to give him some? And we become, of, you see, listen, the reason why we are unfaithful is not because of just the ordinary affliction and, perse- and persecution. No, because let me tell you, even if you are an unbeliever, affliction and persecution will also come into your life. So affliction and persecution in themselves are not the issue. The issue is the fact that after the affliction and the persecution have come, you deem it an offense for God to give you such an instruction. And so what enters into your heart is the one that chokes the word and you are unfruitful. So now, if they say bring your tithe, you come and give tip. Just to satisfy everybody that you didn't come and give air offering or air tithe. Uh, they say do this offering, do this, and you will flout the word of God in the face. Sometimes what we do is you try to go and look for another scripture or go to the internet and the things that people from their dirty mind have put over there, you now begin to use that as your, your defense. The things that you were taught by your grandfather and your father, you throw it away. Now you have internet. When you be now it is the evidence from the internet that you are using if even the bishop preaches you should make you say, me too i have another message you should give me a chance to show you and prove to you why we shouldn't give tight why why what is first proof? me too i understand it so you let the things that have been said by the world cause you to take offense at some scripture scriptures that your parents and grandparents have practiced now you have now become the eye open person that you are now going to tell them what the new truth is beware of new truths hallelujah it is that pain in your heart the offense that results from seeing something that you have been ordered to do and thinking it is too hard or too difficult to do and yet god is asking you to do it is the offense you take that leads to the choking of the word that has been deposited in you and that's why you are unable to fulfill it. And this comes straight to any, many, many, many other, other lifestyles. Whether in marriage, whether in school, whatever it is, you look at the word of God and you tell yourself, this one is not a loving father that can, can access to do that. So I'll do what the, the loving father, what is near me, told me. And so you go ahead and do it, taking an offense against the word of God and doing things that please your own self. Oh, of course, you have your own Bible and you are pleasing your own self. That is what makes most of us unfruitful. And that is the stony cause. The third cause that Christ gave us in the book of Mark, again, chapter 4, verse 19, is the stony cause. What is a Tony cause? The person comes to the assembly of God and is given the word of God and straight away he believes, he's happy, he goes out, hey, they said um, we should um, do evangelism. Do one, two, one, two. And now tells himself, this thing cry, if I had used that same one hour to go and do that upper I would have gotten five pounds. I would have gotten hundred Ghana. Why should I not go and do it and gather so that me too I can ride in the car. Me too I can buy that shoe. Me too. Bible says that the Tony cause that prevents us 
from becoming fruitful one is the cares of this world the things that the world cares for become what we care for we care so much to be equal to be the same to look alike like any other person beside us and therefore we do things that will make us put ourselves in that position forgetting the word of god the curse of this world the curse and this life there are if you want the curse of this world to detect what you should do you have more you, you have more than you can carry and i always say listen if it is food you want to eat it is not waking up early and sleeping late that will put food on your table for the child of god eats not by the by the sweat of his brow but he eats by the grace of god it is the lord that gives us power to make any wealth at all and certainly he will give it to the one who has a correct mind on that issue if you know the purpose for which he is giving you whatever coins he will give you more but for you to get it so you'll be even with somebody else he's having uh, 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 what's the latest car <laughs> what's the latest car <laughs> Rolls Royce <laughs> you see these are the deceitfulness of riches you are this there is a way that getting all those things takes away your attention from the things of god the last and the bible says that and enter into in the, the, the and the last of other things curse of the world deceitfulness of riches and last of other things now once your mind is fixated on those things there is no way you can have time to even think of have i got temperance okay let me check and add it have i got godliness let me check and add it do i know anything in the bible at all let me learn small about the things of god at least learn the times in which we are at least learn to know something that god is right it is the knowledge of god hallelujah you don't we don't have time for it because all our life we ask you to chase after things that will make us look just like the other person and ladies and gentlemen i'm to announce to you that the church as a whole has been falling to this one trend which our lord jesus christ spoke and revealed to apostle john in the book of revelations chapter 3 from verse 14 that in the latter times of all the characteristics of the church which he prophesied in and you see it is so beautiful the one who gave birth to the church gave the characteristics of the church in all ages till he comes to take the church back and why did he do do that i'm sure when i was telling you all the reasons why we are unfruitful somebody is asking so what can we do i'm going to tell you what the master himself has written in his word that we should do to come out of it you see if god shows you a problem he did not show you the problem so that he will get you to be trapped by the trouble problem no it is because he has an answer ready for you he reveals so that he would give you the answer for your redemption so if today we are hearing that we are we all have fallen into this trap of the latter time period then means there is an antidote which god wants us and we shall look at it briefly God spoke to the Apostle John whilst he was on the uh, island of Patmos right from the book of uh, Revelations from chapter 2. He spoke about the characteristics of the Ephesian church. Now, the Ephesian church had to do with the general characteristics of the church at that time. Those seven churches that he spoke about, not because there were only seven churches, there were many churches, but the characteristics of these churches denote what the general trend of all churches in that age group would be and the first was the Ephesians church 
The second was the Spina Church. The third was the Church of Pergamos. The fourth was the Church of Thyatira. The fifth was the Church of um, Sardis. The sixth was the Church of Philadelphia. And categorically has been studied and found that the characteristics of the Church of Laodicea started in the early 20th century, 1900 AD. Now, open to the book of Revelation chapter 3. Let's go there quickly. I'm just realizing <clears throat> my time is running. This is a main meat for this morning. All that we have said so far is to prepare the grounds. Because if we know the generation in which we are, then we know what God has prescribed for us. And we can get out of this unfruitfulness by God's own formula. Not by what we think is right, but by God's own formula. We are in that general characteristics of the Laodicean church. And what did Christ talk about the Laodicean church? Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. Let's go. And unto the church, unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans. Who are these Laodiceans? That part of that world was named after the wife of Emperor Antiochus. The wife was called Lodis. And that's just a, 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 a bit of a background for you to understand what is going on there. And this was a town that have a lot of wealth. In fact, there was an earthquake in that town around about AD 60. And it is on record in history that when they had this great earthquake, they did not call Israel. Israel was not even born by then. They did not call America. They did not call anybody. They, they built the city by their own resources without even asking for money from the emperor. Already, I started laying the ground. As to the kind of people who lived in Laodicea, they were rich. They said to themselves, we don't need a government. We would repair all the earth. And they repaired it. And it became a center of excellence. In fact, it is on record that this town were very advanced in medicine. And I'm going to show you a few things that they do. In fact, in that part of town, there are major problems. Every part of the, the world, there is a, a, a health problem. Eh? Just like for today, we will say that for the third world, our major problem is infections. And the white man, his major problem is a degenerative disease or non-communicable disease like heart attack and all the things that when you eat, so, 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 eh? so these oil things and uh, fast food, you get heart attack, hypertension, diabetes, those ones was for them. Unfortunately, even in this uh, current era, we haven't finished managing our infection, but we are going to import this in addition to ours. So today, you even go to the village and grandma is asking for his pizza or her pizza. Why shouldn't hypertension and, and heart attack occur even in the village? It didn't used to be so. It was not so. When, when you have some, some green, green soup, no oil on top of it, with tree, a boom, I mean, healthy meal, healthy. And, and, and it, was, it was very difficult to find a case of heart attack let alone have an 18 years girl or boy come with severe hypertension today we are getting all that why because the infections which is our main, main aim we have we have not handled it we have come to add the white man's to ours hallelujah so in that part of the world they were advised and in that part what the problem they had was a lot of infections of the eye We'll read it right now, what they needed. And I'll tell you the spiritual implications. So the background were a healthy people, people of substance, people who have advanced in knowledge. Not the knowledge of God. Knowledge of earth, this world. Hallelujah. The wisdom, they are different. And the knowledges are different. This one, it is of, of this earth. How to Cure somebody with malaria and eye infection, and they were advanced. So, the Omoji Omohudi, that is this church of Laodicea. And look at what they told themselves. Now, when Christ Jesus revealed their problem, he said, These things saith the Amen, 
the faithful and true witness the beginning of creation of god and i will tell you why and when you look at all the address that he gave to the people they, they all have a similarity in their way of being addressed go on to the next verse i'll come back to that verse i know your works and that you are neither cold nor hot and i would have wished that you were either of them that is the kind of people it's like professing god but there's no power based professing their believers but then they deny the power thereof they do not take what they are hearing or reading from scriptures as as something very true that they ought to do they took it lightly and they did what their own heart wanted them to do that is the kind of people we are talking about and bible is saying that for such a group of people they were neither hot nor they were cold and the thing that god does not want in his body is for you neither to be hot nor cold and though he told him he's going to do what spill them out that is the nature of the church that we have today go on to the next verse because thou seest i am rich and i am increased in goods and have need of nothing these are the deceits of riches this is the deceit of riches and when it gets into your head you will be surprised to go to the uk today the people who brought us the gospel and you talk to them about jesus christ and their grandchildren who are presently in charge we want to find out whether you are selling a new product you, you, you wonder where what their grandfathers left behind have gone to of course we know they have all been chained into mosques and to beer bars and so it is so possible that wealth can enter us and make us neglect our foundations if you are not working you have a per diem and so you don't have to go and pray to get food to eat like we do over here if such a person lives in such an environment would he ever think there is a need for god and that is what is happening their wealth makes them think that there is no need for god and that is what scripture is telling us he has not he has no need of anything but you see one thing he has forgotten is the fact that these people are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked which is the true state of affairs let's go back to second corinthians uh, second peter chapter um five but read verse eight and nine and not these words that are described over there let's go to second peter where we came from um, um and and i'll show you something over there chapter one verse eight and nine second peter chapter one verse eight and nine now the list i gave you bible is saying that if you do these things and you abound in them that is you add to your faith virtue or, or, or good character you add to virtue uh, knowledge you add to knowledge temperance or self-control you add to that uh, 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 patience you add to that godliness you add to that brotherly kindness you add to that love if you do that and you abound in it they will make you neither barren nor unfruitful so it is not possible to be unfruitful if your agenda is to keep adding and adding and adding there will be no question that the things you are expecting to see in this church as they take place in your life they become manifest on the outside then he goes ahead and say that go to the next verse verse 9 but he that lacketh these things is what did you see it in the book of revelations he is blind cannot see afar off 
has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So to be unfaithful has its roots in these things that shook our life. And once the curse of this world and the many other lusts begin to choke the soundness of scripture that encourages to build one thing upon the other, you are definitely going to be unfruitful. And that is the kind of state the whole church has been engulfed in. And God warned us from the book of Revelations that be in the days proud to him coming to take his, his people and give them this new body, this will be the state in which they are. Let's go back to Revelations. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 3 and go down now to the next 15. I'll come back to this 14. Moreover, I will endeavor that you be, go back to the next. Now, oh no, no. I'm talking about the Revelation, the book of Revelation. In fact, that scripture in Peter talked about the fact that very soon Peter was going to the end of his life and he was telling them that it is needful for him to remind, to remind them of all those things because he's soon going to put down this tabernacle. In fact, he's part of the people who shall rise first and we, those who are alive, will follow. But then he had put it on himself that he was continually going to instruct the church and remember them on those things. And when you read the rest of that uh, chapter in the book of Peter, that is what he's going to tell you. But let's come back to the book of Revelations. Now, sixteen says that, So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. 17. Because thou seest I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, but you did not know that you are wretched, you are miserable, you are poor, you are blind, you are naked. 18. I cancel you. Today, God is counseling us. For whatever you are involved in, which you agree, is not giving you the time, the needed devotion, the needed time to contemplate on your own life and the life of your loved ones around you so you can give to yourself this art on good virtues that God speaks about so you can offer to your loved ones the good things in scripture praying for them and do you don't even pray for your own self even yourself so when it comes to you pray for somebody that one is a different story altogether even your own self you don't have time to pray for your own self but you see, these are the fruits that God, I'm saying, we are not talking about the fruits that is under this topic. We are talking about the fruits that your master will ask you when you enter. That judgment that is going to be in the hallway, when you gladly enter with your new body, and the saints are being judged at the seat, the bima seat. Where is your fruits? Is the first question. Because the fire of the Holy Ghost would have removed all the chaff, all the things. And so if you had nothing, the Bible says you suffer loss, but you yourself, you enter heaven, but you enter heaven empty. And that is, has been the topic for the whole month. And I'm saying that God has predicted that we those in the end time, that is where we are going to be. That's the kind of situation we're going to find ourselves. And has given an antidote. So he's saying to us. As to what we should do. Buy of me. Where are we? Gold. That is tried in fire. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed. And the shame. The shame of thy nakedness. Do not appear. And anoint your eyes with eye salve. This is an eye ointment. That is what he's been doing. But you see, it's not just the physical eye ointment. It's talking about the opening of the understanding of your, the, your, the, your, your, your mind's eye. Your mind's eye. Your understanding of the things of God. Because if the understanding comes in, you will not be the same. You know why the Muslims don't want, want their children to come to secular life for a long time? 
because when they come they have noticed that their eyes are open and begin to ask questions and then they are born again and they lose and so now unko school beko makaranta but god is offering us buy yourself a cd buy yourself reverend Emma's book buy yourself bones shall live again buy yourself something that would enhance would cause the eyes of your understanding to open and you will never be the same you don't have to keep on going round and round and round and round next verse as many as i love i rebuke and chasten. what i've said so far makes one thing that mm, what is this hard work i thought i was coming to church to jump and shout and, and 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 hallelujah and go but i'm giving instruction and being reminded that this same where is your foot is waiting for me to be to answer if nobody asks you here listen your savior will ask you that will be the first question where is your foot you will go to heaven yes but that will be your first question to answer now get back to verse 14 the answer additional answers or the solution to the state of the church resides in the properties of the savior that he exposes to each of the churches for the church of Laodicea, he said i am the amen are we there now what is the meaning of amen verily so it is to tell us that he the one who is asking us or going to reveal our character to us he himself is that trust i mean like his word is true there is no deviation about what he has given us to there is no turning the shadow of turning it is a sure word he is the amen and he's telling us that sometimes you see we don't know who we are but if you don't want to know who you are look at yourself in the mirror of the word and scientifically this has been proved do you know that sometimes you can be hungry and you think that you are tired you can be tired and you think the solution is 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 going to eat our senses sometimes are, are not able to tell which is which. Oh, you try it. Those who work very hard, it is tiredness that they are tired, but they rather think they are hungry. So they rather start eating and eating because as soon as they eat, it gives them some energy. So they think they have solved the problem. But then they've forgotten that there's a difference between eating and sleeping. So, as human beings, sometimes we don't know what we want. We don't know what we, we, we wish to even ask the Father. But we can better know of ourselves by looking at ourselves in the mirror of the Word. And that will show us who we truly are. And this morning, God is saying that the curse of this world is eating us up. It is, making, it is the one drawing our agenda for us. And so we are, not take being, we are not taking heed to ensuring that we add one virtue to the other, sure word of temperance to the other, patience to the other. We are not taking time to do that. And the, the answer to it is to know that he, the one who is revealing that to us, he is that surety, he is that truth. The second property that he showed us is the fact that he is faithful and of a true witness now a true witness must satisfy three things first that true witness must be there when the action was taking place two that witness must understand what the whole thing is and number three must be willing to testify about that thing you can be at a spot and see what is going on but not understand anything but to be a true witness you must be at the scene you must understand what is going on and you must be willing to testify of it he's saying that he is the one the word he gave you 
He is standing surety for that. For that. He, the Bible says that without him is not anything made that is made. Without him is not anything made that is made. Whatever you want is something that has been made by him. You won't get it if you go outside of him. You can only get it if you come through him. For the watchman watches in vain if he doesn't come in. He is the source of what you are looking for. So if he says that you won't get it, you will not get it. Don't use any other formula. Come to him and let him show you what to, to do. And this is one big issue that he had with the Israelites. Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.